So we made an exhibit called the Remembering Heroes, a flying tiger photo exhibit. We took it to three major naval uh, history museums, the SS Hornet in San Francisco, the USS Midway in San Diego, and the, the USS Intrepid in New York City. Let's bring the exhibit to China, first to Beijing, and then approximately 10 other cities. So we'll be able to take the exhibit around and people in many cities can come and see the exhibit uh, in their cities. And again, we've, we've lost most of them because of age, but the two pilots are coming. One is Harry Moyer. Harry Moyer was a P-40 fighter pilot in the 14th Air Force. Harry's 102 years old. He'll be 103 on the 30th, so he'll he'll be able to celebrate his birthday in Beijing. So that's the basis of what we're doing. So I wrote a letter uh, with the help of our Consul General in San Francisco. It was delivered to him. And we just wanted to let him know we were coming. Within two weeks, the President of China returned my letter. So Americans don't know that, but when you tell them that, and then they go, oh, I didn't know that, because we see our movies, we see Top Gun, we see uh, Band of Brothers, so we know about the fighting in Europe, they know about Normandy, you know, they know about the Pacific and Iwo Jima and Pearl Harbor, but there's really not a whole lot out there about China. port at uh, Chongqing. Those runways were built by over, over a period of time by more than two million Chinese people. The Japanese had all the equipment. They destroyed all the equipment. So the way those runways were built were built by hand. Chinese women, Chinese children, old men would break the rocks. They'd bring in water and dirt. They made these stone rollers 10 tons, 15 tons, and 20 tons. And 50 to 200 to 300 people would pull, the, like the Egyptians in movies building the pyramids, you know. Mm -hmm. They would pull these runways that were 8,000 feet, you know, uh, what's that? That's uh, three and a half thousand meters that were 23 inches thick that could hold these large American airplanes. So, and why did they do that? I mean, in many cases, the Chinese built those runways when the airplanes that we used them were not built yet. In some cases, they were building those runways when the factories in the United States that built those airplanes were not built. They knew they would be built and they would be built. But the Chinese knew again, if we can make, if we can give life to this runway, then the Americans and Chinese pilots too, but the, basically the 14th Air Force, the hump pilots could bring in the supplies, but the Flying Tigers can use those airfields to bomb and destroy the Japanese. And that's why two million, two million, two million Chinese people, and again, peasants, farmers, doctors, lawyers, teachers, anybody, they just did it. It was what the average Chinese could do with his bare hands to fight the Japanese. That's drama. That's 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 courage. You know, that's uh, you know working twenty hours a day for you know knowing that you had to do it at a certain time. So it's just a remarkable uh, demonstration of the courage and the desire and the 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 the, the just the, the fortitude of the Chinese people, and it's the relation, the American pilots and the Chinese people. And that is really, that's the remarkable relationship between the American people and the Chinese people. And the good news is all of you know that. Our news, our, our mission is to tell all Americans that. So all Americans understand it. And I'll tell you what, as soon as Americans know, they're interested. They're saying, oh my God, tell me more. <clears throat> and unfortunately, they like to make China the bad guy because they get money from their political people and it's, it's, it's toxic for our country. And the Council General got up and said, you know, this is the worst of times between our two countries. Uh, misunderstanding, uh, bad dialogue and so on. 
But he said, and he looked right at the Flying Tigers in the audience. He said, because what you did in China 80 years ago, that will mean that men of goodwill and understanding between our two countries can always get together and speak and reason and accomplish problems, cure problems, and do so much on the environment. It's the most important thing. And then if the youth remembers it, then they can use that memory. And we, what we say uh, is that it is the shared American and Chinese legacy of the Flying Tigers. That that legacy, with the, the next generation of young people, can do so much for us. It can do so much for relations between the countries. So again, that is what President Xi is admonishing us to do in taking the Flying Tiger legacy, presenting it to the next generation so that they can understand one another and they can build a better world.